all your all success, buddy. All start Eastern on FS1. Micah Parsons looking to get paid, but hold on. Says Cowboys safety Malik Hooker, who joined Keyshawn Johnson. What, what team does Malik Hooker play for? He plays for the Cowboys. Okay. For now. I thought this was like in jest. No, it's not. I watched the whole thing. Go Take a listen. I'm gonna just go ahead and say this now. Micah should be like, Micah, he, he, should, he shouldn't be yet. I, should, I wouldn't put Micah yet. I feel like Micah, I feel like we still got a lot to prove from, Micah still has a lot to prove. Like he's, he's done a, a great job his first couple years in the league. Don't get me wrong, he's a, fin he's a fantastic player. But I feel like Micah still has a surface that he don't even know that he can scratch as far as what he's doing. So I would say Micah, I would say Micah's last. CD, I, I, I put probably Dak second. I'll put Zach. And then my guy, my guy, my guy, wait, man, he's still a young dog, man. Okay, <laughs> it was wild answer. And if you watch the whole thing, and shout out to all gas, no breaks, Keyshawn's pod. I, he goes, it's a five. Key's like, we got to get out of here. But I got this quick question. He gives a five minute <laughs> answer where he speaks glowingly about CD Lamb. It talks about how Zach Martin might be the most important guy on the team, then seems to almost feel bad that it's sounding like he is giving Zach Martin credit for Dak's success. Because he hadn't. It so, was a while right, before it was a, he got and to then, Dak. So yeah. then when he gets to Dak, he then, you know, explains, you know, about how much he likes Dak. He chimes in about how he thinks Dak's top five, top six. He says more nice things about Dak. And then he's like, and to make it clear, what I was saying about Micah before, that is still true. <laughs> uh, Micah's got more to prove. It was... Maybe this was like a veteran trying to motivate the young player. You know, I'm not sure. But it was when I originally saw, I hadn't heard the pod yet. When I originally saw this quote in our rundown that yeah. you put together and then complain about on the air, cool. um, the, uh, I thought it was, I was like, uh, are we kind of being a little unfair, like playing fast and right, loose with right, it? Right, right. And then I heard it and I'm like, no. It's actually, it, it's the rare quote that listens worse than it reads. Like, and so I was shocked by it. Yeah, I, look, props to Keyshawn yeah. Johnson for getting, I mean, what you want to do as an interviewer is get the guy to be completely natural. Yeah. Like, and, and I think Malik may have forgotten that this was going. <laughs> like, I mean, really, he was just completely honest about this thing with no cares in the world whatsoever <laughs> as to how Micah or anybody else was going to think about it. And um, look, in honesty, his order isn't bad. I'm surprised Dak, I think Dak, I would think would have been first, you know, like that's the quarterback. Because initially, Nick, as I'm listening to it, I was like, man, he's actually talked about everybody in, in detail except Dak. So it, yeah. at first it was like, he really yeah. isn't feeling Dak, but then he got to Dak Came later to and, and yeah. did speak glowingly about how smart he is yeah. and, and this and that. But I, it was surprising. For the defensive and, and player to Micah, not take though, up for the defensive player is what's weird. Well, I, and I, I guess, though, in his defense, Micah is only or has played three years. He's the youngest. So I think that's where this is stemming from. But I, it'll be interesting how Micah takes it. All right, so let me put a scenario out for you, bro. Um, if I said after a show, you know what, I need to get better at reading the teases because I'm just loosey-goosey and not paying attention a lot. Yeah. And then you did an interview. Fine. You're like, is there anything Wilds needs to get better at? He's like, yeah, he's a little loosey-goosey with the teases. He's not really paying attention. I don't think I would necessarily get mad. And the reason why I'm using that example is because when Micah had his podcast with CD, he's like, I need to get better. I can take it to another level. I, I'm, I'm going to get more locked in. So is Malik just challenges because of the money? Like you're talking about millions of dollars now. Like it's not just. I felt like a it was parallels to what Micah said money. about himself and what Malik. Yeah, said. but Micah didn't say that in the context of Should getting I get paid. paid. Right. Micah no, wants he's to just get talking paid about right in general. Now. Yeah, but this was a this was a question, direct question about yeah. who to pay. And by the way, I just want to be very clear. That exact scenario you laid out would infuriate me. <laughs> Like, I, and I think it would a lot of people. Like, I think that if I gave an interview and they were like, what do you need to work on as a broadcaster? And I said it. 
Yeah. And then you gave an interview two weeks later, and they asked you, what do you think Nick needs to work on as a broadcaster? And if you said anything other than greatest guy I've ever worked with, <laughs> I'd be furious. <laughs> and, so, and, and so I think, there's, do the I think there's a lot of people that can say something about themselves in a moment of honesty or, you know, perceived vulnerability. They don't want to hear someone else, one of their teammates, certainly, and this isn't the scenario here, but certainly someone, hey, Mike is like, hey, Malik, You've been in the league a long time. When are you getting to the next level? Like, what are we well, talking? That, and like, I, that's the other thing. When you're the best player, right. I don't want to hear You don't want to well, hear that. Well, I think that's the one thing we don't know is what is his relationship with Micah? Yeah. If he's Micah's big brother and he can really talk to him that's like a that. Totally and they, good and maybe they've even talked about yeah. the contract that's why situation. why I let you talk bad about me. But not. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, if, that, if that's the situation, it's fine. But if it's just like, hey, we're teammates, we're cool, yeah. you know, whatever. But I don't really re get, get with him off the field. Yeah. Now Micah might be like, it's Yo, a weird, what it's a doing, weird bro? thing. The Cowboys have a lot of weird. Okay, well, so listen, even if it is a Big Brother thing, um, it's still not a good look because you're talking about so much money, and those interviews, to a degree, I don't want to say a major degree, but they do influence people's opinions. Like, let's say the media really ran with this and it was all over. It was on first things first, first take, whatever, all the shows. And they all agree that Micah should be paid last. That could influence Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. It just can. We know that everyone's easily influenced in that regard. So even if even if uh, Hooker is his big brother and they're, and they're close and they're boys in that regard, and, and that's just like kind of relationship dynamic they have, it's still not good. Um, and even if even if he is, even if he says it to him all the time and he says, Micah, you still got a lot to prove. You shouldn't be getting paid yet. And Micah's like, yeah, you know, I definitely get deserved to be paid. Don't be saying that. And it's more like kind of fun banter. Just when you put that out there publicly in the media for all of these shows to consume and talk about and discuss, I, I, I just think it's, it's a bad look. I, I just I, I just think the Dallas Cowboys continue to just get messier and messier and louder and louder. It shows potentially a lack of respect that the team has for Micah or that they're getting that they're over Micah. Um, it's just it's just messy. It continues to be just absurd. And of course, based off of what we know about Micah, and his personality and who he has proven to be, he's going to have major issues with that. And again, he would have major issues. He would have major issues with that, even if all the money wasn't at stake, because it's still more of like an ego personality thing. But now you want to add hundreds of millions of dollars, and it's like that's only going to jack up the volume even more. So the, the intensity is only going to be even higher. So this is just such a messy thing, and. That's why I do agree with Nick 100% about the, you know, getting angry. Like, if I'm doing this podcast and, like, me and my boys say, hey, you know what? Like, there are certain things that I know I need to work on. I'd like to be a little bit smoother with some of my takes and maybe speak a little bit more clearly. And it's something that I'm working on, and in time, I'll get better. And then now my friend does an interview, and he's like, yeah, Julian has a great, you know, YouTube channel out and podcast out, and it's really great, and he's good great takes. Like, and the guy's like, yeah, you know, he's obviously young and working on it. Like, do you think they, there's anything that he needs to work on? If my boy or teammate or producer, I don't have a producer, but like any of those things, because it is just 100% me, no one else. But if I had anyone part of the team or a friend or a co-host or whatever, and they were like, yeah, he's like, he kind of like rants too much and like doesn't do this and that. And he needs to, you know, be more clear with his points. I'd be like, damn, man, like you don't have to say that. Like you could have just said all positives. Like, and it's not, and that is not even an ego thing. It's more of just kind of like a respect. And like, I, I want you to be honest. I want everyone to be honest, but it's just different. Like let like, and like maybe if we were in a group and we were together and now we're like both being interviewed, right? Like maybe if it was Micah and hooker and now they're like, and they're like, yo, Micah, who do you think should get paid first? And Micah's like, obviously me. And hooker's like, nah, nah, nah. You still have more to prove. It's a different dynamic. But like, when you have someone just straight up saying that, you're just like, what? Like, just say something positive. Just go to bat to me. Just be like, man, I don't even want to get into it. Who should get paid first? I'm not the GM. I'm not the owner. I'm not Jerry Jones. I don't have to wear that hat. The truth of the matter is that we got three bona fide stars, Micah, Dak, and CD. They all deserve their money. And I believe that Jerry will be able to get the job done. That's all you need to say. 
And I know we want these athletes to always be honest. And sometimes when they're honest, we're like, no, what are you doing? But right. And, and from a content creation and just a fan perspective, I absolutely want what Malik Hooker to say, what he said to say. I want that. Please give me that information. It's awesome. But if I'm looking at it from a more like, um, like a suit and you know a suit and tie perspective like i'm actually like part of the staff of the dallas cowboys or i'm a teammate part of the cowboys or maybe even if i'm just a fan of the dallas cowboys you know a diehard fan i'm like ah don't say that just just say the positives just say they're all great players i could never decide because they're all deserve it they all deserve their money they work hard and i'm really excited to to try to run this back with everyone and i think we're going to be great like just say what needs to be said rather than what what is 100% of the truth. But for whatever reasons, it seems like the Dallas Cowboys, more than any other franchise, lack the ability to do that. Whether it's Jerry Jones, whether it's uh, C.D. Lamb, My- not C.D. Lamb, whether it's Jerry Jones, Micah. It's actually really right now, it's Micah and, and um, Jerry Jones more than anything. Because I think Dak plays the mic pretty well. McCarthy plays the well uh, plays the mic pretty well. But like now we're adding in Hooker and... And it's just, I don't know, even Zeke, he's had a couple uh, weird things um, over the last few seasons and even over this past season when he was talking about like winning a Super Bowl of some sort. And it's like, okay, sure. So I, I just, uh, whatever the Dallas Cowboys do when it, to, when, it comes, when it comes to talking to the media or the offseason or just some of the noise that comes out of the offseason, it's just they really are the gift that keeps on giving. I thought Aaron Rodgers was the gift that keeps on giving, but it's really the Dallas Cowboys because – this whole story and this whole thing could have been easily avoided. And the truth of the matter is, is that some of you might be watching this and be like, well, who cares? It's not that big of a deal. You're making a big deal out of nothing. And my answer with that would be like, well, one, welcome to NFL football content uh, in June. That's just the way it goes, number one. But number two, this actually legitimately has the ability to affect the Dallas Cowboys in the locker room. It just does. Do you think that unless they're truly best friends and boys, and it is like a big brother thing, which I have no idea. They don't even know. You think Micah's going to forget that? You think Micah's just going to be the type of guy where he's like, ah, whatever, who cares? No, he's going to be mad. He's not going to like that feeling at all. He's going to be annoyed by it and frustrated by it and talk to some of his boys about it, both his like immediate crew, his immediate team, as well as other Dallas Cowboys. Like It just always has the potential to cause a divide. Locker rooms are incredibly fragile, especially when you're not winning, especially when you partake in some pretty devastating losses, which is what the Dallas Cowboys just did right? That's literally what they just happened. So they're in a lot more of a fragile situation. They don't know if Dak is going to be next season. They don't know if Mike McCarthy is going to be there the next season. Micah Parsons pretty much called out the entire Dallas Cowboys saying that they're not good enough and that Jerry Jones better get better players. Like all of those things that makes them not feel good. That doesn't, that doesn't go well into this coming season. And so I forget who said this, but it's like, don't make a story, you know, in, in June, you know, like there's no reason to, to, to make a story all the way back in June. And that's just what the Dallas Cowboys and Micah keep doing. So I just think like, I don't want to act like this is the biggest deal ever. And this is a disaster. But for those of you that say that this is no deal at all, I would say this is, this is a little bit bigger of a deal than you may be giving uh, credit for. And for those that say this is devastating and this is a disaster. Oh my God. I would also equally disagree with that. But at the very least, It's entertaining, and I'm all for it. But those are just my thoughts. I would absolutely love to hear yours. What do you guys all think? Do you think uh, this is a big deal? Do you think what he said was accurate, or do you think he should have said it at all? Whatever you got, let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment, so whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions, let's get in some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of and think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.